What's up guys, it's Danny here from ArcVis channel, the best place to learn the ArcVis bit. In today's episode, I'll take a simple asphalt material and add some life to it by adding spots, cracks, dust and leaves. And there is another cool tip at the end, so make sure to stick around. Let's get started. So we're gonna start very basic here, really nothing fancy, just one material with one map. In the diffuse reflection and bump map, we can take a look at this clean asphalt texture. Let's see how it looks in the render. Really clean and actually not very realistic road material. So before we're gonna start and add some life to it, let's take a look at some real life example. Now we can see that road could be actually quite complex material. We have some, uh, some dark spots, we have white stripes along the path, we can have some leaves and other uh, elements on the road, we have some cracks and holes and so on and so on. So you can really go uh, creative here and now we're going to try and add some of these details right on top of our uh, texture. Okay, let's bring our uh, material editor. And now for the diffuse, I want to add a composite map. I'm gonna link the map that we have here and link it to the diffuse. All right, so now we can start and add different types of texture right on top of this base map. So add, let's add our first layer and I wanna start with some dark spots. So I'm gonna add a new bitmap and I'm gonna try something like that see how it looks and now as you can see it's override our base material so we need to switch the blending mode to multiply so now only the dark color is going to show up through the map now obviously this looks too much so i'm going to reduce the opacity let's set it to about 30 and we can also see it right in here. Gonna open up uh, the, the preview window. Okay, maybe make it like 40. Okay, and I want also to make it a bit larger. So let's decrease the tiling and also bring up the opacity. Okay, that's fine for now. No, maybe we do it 40. Okay, for, for the next layer, let's add some cracks. So again, I'm going to add some bitmap. And this one could work nicely. So let's add that one. Zoom in a little bit. I want to see the size of the cracks. I think this, this size is okay, so let's change the blending mode as well to multiply. That's fine, maybe reduce the opacity to about 80%. And now for the cracks, I don't want it to spread on the entire surface of the road, so I can add a mask to this layer right in here. So let's add another bitmap. And this time I will go with something like that. Now let's take a look at the size of the mask. I'm going to show it on the material. Okay, I think I can go with something a bit bigger. Okay. Now the next layer would be to add some dust to the side of the road. So it only affects the edges where the road meets the curve. Now in order to do it, we're gonna use the distance map. So let's first add new layer and I'm gonna copy the basic asphalt texture. Let's do copy. I'm gonna add a new 
color correction and I want to make it just a little bit brighter let's say for now something like 0.1 or maybe 0.15 let's go back to our composite map and now let's add a mask using the corona distance now in here we need to tell this map from which object to calculate the distance in our example we need to select the curves and click on plus you can see the effects starting to show up but we actually want want it the other way around we want the light texture to be to start from the curves in the left and the right so we just need to switch between the black and white that looks nice now let's just increase the uh, brightness just to understand better the distance parameters so going back to the corona distance now we can control how far the effect should be by increasing this value you can look at it as sort of a gradient now if we increase the near parameter we actually gonna make the gradient fade less so if we do the same like 150 and 150 we actually telling it to start and to end from the same area so we get a straight line if we reduce the this the near distance to zero then the fade starts right from the curb and go up until the far distance so we can also break up this harsh line by adding a distance scale let's add some noise okay we can make it like so we can increase the noise and change its parameters but for here I want to move the noise into the near color so it will add some variation inside the the area itself now let's decrease the far distance think something like this could work fine all right and now let's make the brighter asphalt texture less bright so make it one maybe 0 0.2 0 0.25 for my next layer i want to add some dry leaves so again let's add another layer for the leaves texture i took this one and in Photoshop I just made the whole the grass area transparent and saved it as PNG and I'm going to show you now why it is important to do so so let's load this te texture in now we want to make sure that the alpha is being used right from the PNG file so right here we have the alpha source inside this map and we're going to change it to image alpha Okay, so now we can see the leaves on top of the asphalt material. So once again here, I want the leaf to be scattered only on the side roads. So again, I'm going to use a distance map. Let's make a copy. And now in here, I don't want the gradient to have this fade effect. So I'm actually going to set the distance near to the same as the far let's make it this 100 and this doesn't matter but let's do 100 okay and i want to break it up by adding some noise to it to the distance scale let's go inside the noise make it fractal and i want to increase the contrast of the noise map so let's reduce high and increase the low parameters this one over here maybe a bit more maybe increase the size okay that works fine 
and obviously you can go on and on and add more and more layer as you wish. And now lastly, as a bonus, let's see how we can add some road marks to finish the whole look of this road. So let's go inside our uh, road. Let's add edit poly and I want to grab the center line and create a new spline shape. Now select the spline and add sweep modifier. Set it as a bar. I want to set it to width of 20 centimeters. And I'm going to make it very thin, about one millimeter, and set it to the center. Now let's add a new material. And I'm going to use this uh, road mark over here as an opacity map. Bring it in, connect it to the opacity. Let's change the color of this material to white. Add some reflection to it. Reduce a bit the glossiness and let's add it to our uh, new spline. Now in the spline, let's check the generate mapping coordinates and let's play a bit with the map tiling. Okay, something like that. And lastly, I want to right click object properties and disable the cast shadows. So it won't cast any shadow on our uh, road. Let's have a look. Now we can also go back to our road material and we can add the road marks to our distance map. So we can have this nice effect also in the center of the road. So now the beauty of using this method is that you actually don't need to unwrap or mess with any crazy UV changes. Even if you have very complex looking road, and let's see example, we can add our material to this road as well. We need obviously to add the pavement object inside the distance. So let's select the two of them. I'm gonna add them here and I'm gonna add them in the second map and also the center marks. If this lesson was helpful to you, then don't forget to check these two over here. And as always, I want to thank you for being here and I see you next time.